Well, maybe you've got some picky eaters in your house, but wait till you see what the people in this next story have to deal with every day. Anne-Marie Berger tonight takes a look at one of the area's largest and most sophisticated food operations. And yeah, if you want to catch up with these folks, you've got to get up pretty early in the morning. Uh, usually we're on staff by 5 in the morning. In the food business, deliveries can start early in the morning. We'll come in, we'll load up the truck, and then we'll try and be out of the building by 5.15, 5.30. Um, and then we try and get all deliveries done by 8 o'clock. Delivering 3,000 pounds of food each day isn't easy, but being on time is important because seven days a week, 365 days a year, rain or shine, this truck delivers meals for more than 18,000 hungry appetites. Chris delivers an eclectic menu. There's veggies, fish, mice, you know, real gourmet stuff. But don't worry, he isn't delivering to a restaurant in your neighborhood. That is, unless you are a resident of the St. Louis Zoo. Good morning. How are you? Pretty good, and yourself? Good. Uh, after this, the keepers will come in anywhere between 7 o'clock and 8 o'clock, and um, they'll go ahead and take it, put what they don't need in their freezers, and the rest will go ahead and thaw for uh, feeding the animals. And then we give the, the birds a variety of fish, because some of them uh, prefer these rainbow trout, some of them like the mackerel, and then the majority of our diet is these capelin. Yeah, you hungry? Oh my. <laughs> Woo, oh. see? Oh, how'd you prepare those? Oh, they're um, special freezer and our thawed, <laughs> thawing your mouth. Sauteed with a little olive oil and garlic. A little bit of that too. <laughs> um, we like to do some whole carcass feedings mm -hmm. and for bush dogs, this mm. would be an example of one of the whole carcasses oh. they like oh, to eat. Oh. So we'll start by throwing them over towards where they are. And but before the bush dogs the can enjoy their okay. mousy treat, before any of the deliveries can happen, the food has to be prepared. And at the Orthwine Animal Nutrition Center, the residents at the St. Louis Zoo have their own, well, chefs. We've got three keeper staff that do the bulk diet prep and then a manager. They're working uh, real hard to get all of the food out. I think we calculated it one day and they're moving each of them about a ton and a half of food a day by the time you pick up and, and move the bins around to each of the buildings. In a year's time, this kitchen will prepare more than 10 tons of carrots, 20 tons of herring, 1,625,000 mealworms, 13,000 bales of hay, 1,000 cases of kale, and 500 cases of bananas. All right, here's your tip of the day. If you're going to make herc salad at home, make sure you grate the carrots, bananas, sweet potatoes, and apples. However, the lettuce, you need to chop. There is more to feeding the animals than just preparing their favorite salad, or rodent. The dietary needs of every mammal, reptile, and insect are researched. There's really kind of a basic set of nutrients that carries across a wide variety of species. We'll set all the diets based on calorie needs. And so we can set the energetics for any animal based on their body weight and their metabolism. So a high fat fish obviously has got more calories than a low fat fish. But we'll use about six different species of fish to feed our animals here. If we're trying to put on weight, we may want a diet that contains more of the high fat fish to give more calories. If we're trying to take off weight, you might use squid because it doesn't have any fat. However, very often, they don't know how many calories are in the foods that they're using. There's a lot of food stuff, so we can't, like I said, we can't look up in a human food table. So our animals may eat bananas with the skin, very different nutrient package than banana fruit alone that humans would eat. So we have to do a lot of just basic nutritional analysis of our foodstuffs. The St. Louis Zoo is making it easier for zookeepers and wildlife managers all over the world to access animal nutrition information. Dr. Dierenfeld developed a software database appropriately called Zootrition, 
where researchers from across the globe can maintain diet records and compare nutritional content in foods. One of the most important parts of any research is to get it published so that that information is available to the rest of the world. That's part of the scientific process. So, I mean, this may be just the beginning of a project, but getting it written up, evaluated, and published for the rest of the world um, is, is a critical part of that. The data don't do you any good if it's sitting in your drawers. Researchers can measure proteins, fat, minerals, and caloric content in foods right here at the St. Louis Zoo's Nutrition Center. So what happened to these guys? They don't look so good. <laughs> okay, they've just been freeze-dried. So we weigh them before we put them on the freeze dryer and weigh them after, and then we can look at the water content. Why do you do that? What's the point well, of doing the, that? Well, water is one of the major nutrients that we have to look at. So something like whole prey, like a fish, is about 75% water. So that's the first step for our quality control. We'll dry it, and then we'll grind it up and send it to another lab so we can look at protein and fat content and minerals. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we actually use our coffee grinders for a lot of different aspects. Do you use this coffee grinder for the coffee? No. Okay, just coffee. Now trout does get eaten by humans, so there is nutritional content out there on trout fillets. But the animals at the zoo are eating fish with the bones and intestines. So again, it's a different nutrient package altogether. Now do you ever come back from doing this sort of process and say, hey, we're not getting enough protein or we're not getting enough nutrients? Absolutely. And we use this when we set contracts for buying hay. Um, we actually ask for hay that contains this level of protein, this level of fiber, these kinds of minerals, and we can use that kind of analysis to double check. And then we obviously have to use that information to develop the diets to balance all the nutrients for our animals. Dr. Dierenfeld mentioned weight management as a dietary consideration for the animals here at the zoo, but it's much more complicated than that. I think one of the most challenging things in feeding zoo animals is that we're often working with young growing animals, reproducing adults that are taking care of those young growing animals, animals that aren't reproducing or just maintaining, and maybe even some geriatric animals all in the same group at the same time. Right. And the that needs, goes to that complicated part. It can complicate things because the needs for those different animal groups can be very different. And when the food doesn't add up to the right nutrients, they do what we humans do, add supplements. This is what we're going to feed the penguins this morning. We've got a plate of pillfish here that we give them. Uh, we need to add some vitamin B1 and vitamin E to the first fish of the day. We lose some of the vitamins when we thaw and rinse right. the fish. So we add vitamin B1 and vitamin E and we just put it right underneath the gill there and we give that to the birds in their fish, first fish of the day. Is it a pill or how do you... It's just two pills. One's a capsule for vitamin E and then the other one's a 150 mil milligram tablet and that's the B1. So we just slip it inside. You can see that that's the pill right there. Okay. Sticking out of the gill. It's hard to believe something like this. Even people will eat them, you know, oh. usually people like to eat them with chocolate on top of them. But. While there are many things known about animal nutrition. And then for all of our reptile salads, we give them some calcium carbonate. Um, it will help their bones stay strong. There is still much to be discovered. And the research being done and shared through the Orthwine Nutrition Center at the St. Louis Zoo is opening the possibilities for the future. Certainly there have been people feeding animals for years and the curatorial and veterinary staffs have, have often had that primary responsibility. But now um, there are people specializing in comparative nutrition so we can all work together and optimize the health, the management and the nutrition for various species. So how many more? Uh, usually we'll drop off to Goat Hill, Kudu, Antelope, Herbitarium, Camel Barn, Hospital, Birdhouse, Elephant, and then Children's Zoo.